first part of the prehab on program A, we're going to combine two exercises that are really designed just to make sure your shoulders are nice and warm before we start the pressing work. So here we're going to get two uh, mini bands. We're going to loop them together and then we're going to perform a pull, an external rotation and a press. And I'll go through some of the cues that I want you to stick to. So the first thing Leanne's going to do is make sure she's nice and neutral here. What you want to avoid is kind of sitting into the lumbar. Sometimes people will sit and, and compress the lower back. We want to avoid that. Stay nice and neutral. She's going to perform a pull and I kind of want her arms to come at a right angle. You'll notice her hands now are kind of in that V position. So we need to take them out to a right angle here, sitting 90 degrees. She's then going to perform an external rotation and that's a lot harder than it looks. And then from there, I want her to push straight up in the air and you'll see there how the hands are coming forward. So she might just need to release the tension by coming forward an inch or two. And I want her hands directly above her head. And then what she's going to do is she's going to retrace that. So she's going to pull it down now internally rotate and then come forward and then again pull hands to a right angle first externally rotate press above head so the bands are trying to pull her shoulders forward and what we're trying to do is to get her in this position she's then going to trace it down slowly internally rotate come forward just do one more of those just do one more so it's pull come to a right angle external rotation press above head and sit directly above your head, pull it down, good, internally rotate and push it forward. She's going to perform those and then jump straight into a prone ISO hold. So it's face down on the bench. I've set her up with a couple of 10K dumbbells and all she's going to do here is just hold an isometric position for 30 seconds. So she's just going to retract her elbows, pull her elbows back and we're trying to get these scaps together. And what you might be able to see or, or maybe not is that she's actually trying to squeeze, okay? So she's trying to keep tension in her lats and keep these scaps together. She's going to hold that for about 30 seconds. Uh, the idea of, of the combination of these two exercises is just to try and get your shoulders in the right position and nice and warm so that we limit any risk when we go into some quite aggressive pressing work next. So we're going to start program A with some banded speed bench. So some of you might have used bands before, what we call accommodating resistance. Uh, people associated with Westside Barbell, place I trained in say 2008-2009. So why use bands? Okay, so essentially what the bands do is they reverse the strength curve. So typically the hardest part of an exercise is at the bottom when you're reversing the weight. When you use bands or chains, what happens is the further you go through the exercise, it actually gets a little bit tougher. So you actually uh, train bar acceleration. Band work is very, very good in terms of recruiting type two, two fibers, the ones that have the biggest potential for hypertrophy and strength gains. So when you move things with greater velocity, so some of you might have heard of VBT, velocity-based training, when you move things at greater velocities, you typically can recruit your type two fibers a little bit better. They're the, they're the ones you wanna target. There are a couple of things just to, to point out with this band. If you haven't used them before, maybe grab one of the guys just to help you set up because it can get a little bit technical. When you're taking the bands off, you also have to be careful that you don't take one side off and then the bar flips. So just be a little bit careful and get someone to show you the first time you do it. Now we've set Leanne up here with no poundage, but you're gonna use about 60% of your one RM. So you should, if your one RM was 100K, you might be somewhere around 60K on the bar and then have the bands. And we're looking to really accelerate through the reps. So we would call this an X rep on the concentric. Rather than being smooth and steady, we want this to be a little bit more aggressive. That's why you need to make sure you're properly warmed up before you start. So Leanne's gonna give you her best demo and try and be as aggressive and as fast as she possibly can. Right, I'll lift it off for you. So nice and solid through your core, shoulder blades pulled together here on three. One, two, three. So be solid, now I want you to pull it and push it as fast as you can. There you go, snap the bands. Two, good, and again, good, and rack it. Okay, so we're gonna do one more. So why do we only do three reps? Well, what we'd find is, is that if we continued that to maybe a set of six, seven, or eight, then the actual force and the speed of the bar would really start to drop off as, as fatigue sets in. For this specific exercise, we don't want that. We want all of these three reps to be as fast and as powerful as we can. What you'll typically find is that maybe when you get to about set four or five, you'll have some potentiation. So potentiation is generally thought of to occur only with very, very heavy poundages, but it does occur to a certain degree when you do dynamic work. So typically when people do uh, speed bench or speed squat or speed pulls, what you'll find is, is that maybe sets four, five, six, seven are actually your best sets, and then the fatigue starts to kick in and it starts to slow down. So let's do one more. So one, two, three. Okay, nice and solid, pull and push it. One, there you go, snap the bands, that's good. Uh, perfect, that's perfect. And relax, good.
OK, so for the second exercise, we're into an isometric dumbbell press. So in the first wave, we worked predominantly on eccentric exercises. Now we're moving into some isometrics. So that purely means an exercise without movement. So Leanne's going to roll back, take the dumbbells to the top. Now she's going to take them all the way to the bottom and then hold them there for about five counts, maintaining tension. So she's almost squeezing, then force to the top. No pause at the top. Take them straight back down. Good. Hold for five counts. So she maintains tension like a squeeze, then push again, and then straight back down. So try to avoid any rest period at the top. You don't want to kind of lose tension from this exercise. And again, just do one more, take them down, keep the shoulders pulled underneath, press to the top, and relax. So continuing the isometric theme, this time we're going to shift into a neutral grip chin up with an isometric hold. Now, if you can achieve the prescribed reps, then you'll need to add poundage to this. So if you find that you can perform the five reps with a five count hold and it's no challenge at all, get the weight belt on, add 10, 15, 20K, whatever you need. The second thing to point out, when you do the isometric hold, don't do it all the way at the top. That's not really the position of kind of maximum contraction. We're gonna come almost to like a 90 degree angle. That's where you'll be exposed the most and that'll be the toughest. So here's how it's gonna work. Leanne's gonna hang first of all. And then I'm gonna give her a little push to get her to the top. She comes about one third down a little bit more and she holds there. So now she's going to hold there for about five counts. Then she comes the whole way down. I'll give her a little push all the way to the top. Come back down about one third. So that's a much harder position to hold the isometric. And if you're at the top where you're going to hide from it, come all the way down. And again, one more all the way to the top and come down to that 90 degree angle. So you want your isometric position to be almost 90 degrees and relax. So after the chins, we're going to move into a single arm dumbbell row, again with an isometric emphasis. So a very standard exercise. Leanne grips the bench with her hand. Uh, just shift this leg across a little bit, get a bit more width. Okay, so when we do a, um, a dumbbell row, you kind of want to avoid going up and down in a straight line. I always say to people, think about kind of ripping an old lawnmower cord. And the reason for that is that you want the elbow to kind of track back against the body. You always get a better contraction in the lat. So Leanne's going to pull from the bottom. Imagine she's ripping the lawnmower. She holds at the top for about five counts. And again, when she's holding it, be really conscious and have tension. So same again. So she holds for five counts, kind of pushes away under control, pulls to the top, holds for five counts. Good. Now, if you just change legs, so we'll do the other side so they can see from a different angle. So Leanne's got a good shape there for her spine. Looks, looks nice and neutral. So she's going to pull to the top create as much tension as she can here. And then I want to imagine she's pushing it away. So remember, it's not that straight line. It's more like a lawnmower. Push it away. And again, one more pull. And you want to think about where the elbow finishes. That's what really gets the contraction in the lat. That's good. OK, so to add a little bit of volume um, to try and create some waste products that kind of stimulate some hypertrophy at the end of this, Leanne's going to hold that for about 20 minutes. No, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do a strip set on um, a slightly inclined push up. Now, what you're aiming for is probably about 30 reps for the complete set. And there's various ways of doing this. So we could, for example, load Leanne with, say, one, two, three. Keep loading her until she could maybe perform something like eight reps. Then I take one off. Maybe she gets six more. I take the next one off. Maybe she gets six more. I take that off. And she goes all the way to 30. OK? Doing a plank. <laughs> there is another way of doing it where you can do it kind of manually. So if Leanne gets back into position, so what I'm going to do is just apply manual resistance with my hands. So if you're training with a partner, you can do this together. So if I apply a little bit of resistance, and then Leanne does the first one, a bit, bit more resistance, and again, a bit more, three, keep going, keep going, four. So I'm going to do that until she breaks her nose, or until she gets to about eight or nine. And then, of course, as she gets fatigued, I actually start applying a little bit less. Keep going, keep going. And now as she starts to fatigue, what I start to do is actually provide some support. Keep going. So now I'm just going to pull her a little bit as she needs it. And I can just adjust the amount of resistance or the amount of support I give her. Keep going. Keep, oh. Now your target rep range should be about 30. OK, so maybe, maybe say you start with three 10, 10K plates on your back. You get eight to 10. You take one off. You get your training bar, take one off. You get another eight to 10. But just keep going until you get 30 reps. So to get some volume and a finisher for the lats, we're going to apply the same theory and perform a drop set. This time we're going to use the landmine attachment and we're going to do a close grip bent over row. So Leanne's going to come over into position. That's good. So she's going to try and expose the lower back, not keep it in the legs. She's going to perform about six to eight reps. Good, nice tempo. And then the moment she's going to get to failure, what we'll do is we'll just strip one plate off. So give me a few more. And again. 
Good, stay there. Keep going. And the same kind of target. So we want Leanne to get maybe 25 to 30 reps in total. Keep going, just give me one more. Good. And if we find that she was to reach a point where she couldn't even pull the bar, then we can give her some manual support, okay? Just give me one more. And relax, nice. Okay, so for some abdominal work in program A, we're gonna use the Kaiser machine for a wood chop variation, and we're gonna pair it with a seated plate twist and press. So it's a lot of oblique work in this pairing, okay? Now there's various ways of doing wood chops, so we can go high to low, we can keep it at the same angle, and there are different ways of kind of where you put your weight, etc. What I would say is, find the variation that works best for you. What I'd encourage you to do is to think about shifting your weight between the inside leg and the outside leg as you finish, and that's what Leanne's gonna do on our demo today. So you also want to think about the top hand as the one that's doing the work. You'll find if you think about the bottom hand, it becomes a bit too much of a bicep and a chest exercise and you kind of start to unload the obliques, which is really the target area that we're trying to work. So it's top hand doing the work. Leanne really has the majority of her weight in this leg here. And then she's going to rotate, keeping her shoulders and her head square. Head square, look forward. Good. Good. And she's going to shift. I just want her to aim a little bit higher on the finish. Good, come back. Good, that's not bad. Good, so you see the way that the weight just transfers a little bit between her hips. If we're playing sports, we may perform this more dynamically. But for now, that's perfect. Just do one more. When you do that eccentric phase, do one more. Just stay completely under control. So you feel it trace back. Okay, now come down. Now Leanne's gonna pick up the plate. So her feet come off the floor. So that means she has to stabilize, has to tighten her abs. She's gonna rotate this way and then punch with the plate and then take it back, rotate and punch with the plate. Good. Good, just give me one more. And relax. So Kaiser wood chops paired with plate twist and press. Mm -hmm.